NK block codes are very useful for error control coding. We'll talk about this in some detail now. Consider a message bitstream. I'll show a portion of that bitstream. An NK block code says take K bits out of that bitstream. So K we call our message length. So we'll grab k bits, and for illustrative purposes here, I'll say k is 4. And we then introduce some check bits into, this, into the stream, where we say that overall, we need to have a code word length of value n. And n is going to be larger than k. So we would grab those four message bits. And again, for my specific drawing here, I'll say that I'm inserting three check bits. Grab the next four, insert another set of three check bits. I'm calling them Cs, but they, they would be different values for each block, and so on. So we expand the size of our bit stream to accommodate these additional check bits. Overall, we say the code word length is seven. So altogether for what I've drawn here, we would call this a 7-4 block code. Now an important measure of the efficiency of a code is the code rate, R sub C. The code rate is trying to give a sense of how much value you get from the code word in terms of message. So we say, well, there's k bits of useful message divided by n total bits. So we'd say a higher number is better for code rate because more, more of the code is devoted to message instead of check bits. Now let's consider the uh, 3 1 repetition code, meaning one message bit which can take on values of either zero or one. The code word length is three. And the way the repetition code works uh, is illustrated here. We say the message bit is simply replicated to fill in the check bits. Very simple code to create. Another possibility for having a total of um, three bits in the code would be to say, well, let's allocate two bits to the message. So I'll list all possible two-bit values. And so-called odd parity code says, do whatever is necessary for the check bit to ensure that you have an odd number of ones in the code. So in this case, the check bit has to be a one. For this message, we see that we already have a one or a single one. Same for that. And lastly, where we had two ones, we have to stick down a third one to give us an odd number of ones. Now let's consider the, the code rate that results from these two different types of codes. The code rate is one-third for the repetition code, or 33%. The code rate for the odd parity code is two thirds or 66%. So we would conclude that the odd parity code is actually twice as efficient as the repetition code. Now, an important subclass of block codes uh, is linear block codes. And the definition says that the mod 2 sum of any two valid code words is also a valid code word. An important consequence of that is that the code word that contains all zeros is all, always a valid code word. Now, is our repetition code linear? Well, if we add those two values, we get another valid code word. Those are the only two possible code words, so that's a simple conclusion to make in this case. Actually, adding the code word to itself is 
is not the point. We wanted to just uh, add different code words together. How about the odd parity code? Well, first of all, we observe that there is no zero code word, so that seems to be a giveaway right there. Also, if we consider adding these pair of codes, notice that we get a, a result that is not a valid code word because the parity in this case would be said to be even. So the odd parity code is not a linear code. Well, let's try a, a very small variation on that odd parity code and say that we want to have the check bit give us even parity or a total number of even or an even number of ones altogether. There we see the all zero bits code word. That looks good. If we add a candidate set of code words, and this is all binary math that's happening there, or modulo two math, if you will. So we discard that final carry out. We see zero one one, and that is a valid code word there. You could continue this exercise and find out, in fact, that the even parity code is, in fact, a linear block code. Now, what, what's the utility of having a code be linear or not? Well, let's take a look. Remember that the minimum Hamming distance, or dmin, was a very important number that helps us determine the error control power of a code. We, quickly define the Hamming weight of a code word as the number of total ones. So this is where the linear block code property becomes important. It turns out that the minimum Hamming distance is simply the minimum weight code word. Again, the, the block code has to be linear for this property to hold. So we simply look at our three bit repetition code and say, well, the minimum number of ones is three. So that means the ham minimum Hamming distance is also three. Even parity code, we would say that the minimum weight code word is two. Therefore, the minimum Hamming distance is two. So we see that there's a very important trade-off revealed here just by com comparing these two examples. We really have a trade-off between air control power and code rate. That is, we can get high air control power, but our rate is low, or we can go the other direction, have not so much power, but more efficiency.